El Chino Anthrax was once the deadliest hitman for the Sinaloa cartel. But what's intriguing about his story isn't who he was before he died. It's who he used to be before he became a weapon of death. This leads us to the big question. How does a man go from having a normal life to being the most wanted hitman in all of Mexico? Let's find out. On a cold night in Sinaloa, Mexico, El Chino Anthrax, or as he was still known back then, Jose Rodrigo Arechiga, was sitting at home with his wife and little daughter. He needed money to take care of his family, and he needed it desperately. He was forced to listen to the evil voices in his head, the voices telling him to turn to his neighbors for help. His neighbors, the notorious Zambada family. If you have no idea who or how dangerous this family is, let me tell you a little story about them. The Zambada family founded the Sinaloa drug cartel back in 1987. Ishmael El Mayo Zambada is one of the four people that started this cartel as part of a bigger cartel with El Chapo. From selling just a few blocks of cocaine to building an empire on merchandise, the Zambada family became known as major players in the cartel. Little Arechiga just happened to grow up living next to him. He went to school with the sons of Ismael El Mayo Zambada. So he had a little idea of what the Zambada family did to make money. Only he wasn't interested in knowing more than he was told. Knowing he could make a fortune by rendering easy services to the family. He never wanted to be a part of whatever they had going on. And actually wanted to become a pilot for the Mexican military. Sadly, Arechiga had a slight skin disorder known as ichthyosis vulgaris, which is basically the accumulation of dead dry skin cells on the face. This made the Mexican military turn down Arechiga's application to join the service. Thinking back on it, maybe it was for the best, because being friends with the heir of such a sinister cartel and being in the Mexican military might not have played out well for Arechiga in the long run. Regardless, the path he eventually took wasn't any better. But before taking that dangerous path, Arechiga tried to get a degree in architecture from a college in Sinaloa. It was at this time that he had his daughter and eventually got married to his partner, Yuriana Castillo Torres, leading to Arechiga's dropping out of school to find ways to take care of his family. So, like I was saying before, it was a cold night in Sinaloa when Arechiga made up his mind to seek some financial aid from his next door neighbors. But of course, having dealings with his neighbors, the Zambada family, meant Arechiga had to do shady things. And by that I mean, spill blood on his hands. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Arechiga didn't immediately start carrying out such jobs for the cartel. He needed to first earn their trust and prove to them that he could be a loyal servant. He was placed in charge of the logistics of their products. He started with smaller kilo deliveries before devising a master plan on how to ship tons of product from Mexico to the US without raising any suspicion. He successfully transported tons and tons of product without having any issues with the local border patrol of the US. And soon enough, his good services were rewarded with millions of dollars swimming all around him. The main reason he started working with the Sinaloa cartel was to take care of his family. At this point, he had enough money to take care of the whole community. He could have easily withdrawn from the cartel, having built the blueprint for the organization. But Arechiga wanted more. More money, more power, and a bigger seat on the table. He was ready to go all in. Arechiga had gained the trust of the top members of the cartel and the Zambada family, including the head, El Mayo. Somewhere in between the taste of wealth and power corrupted Arechiga's mind. A darker, more evil, and more sinister side of him came alive. He became as vicious as a vampire and was ready to do anything for the Sinaloa cartel. And that's when he became a murderer. He murdered anyone and anything that stepped in between the operations of the cartel. He became very famous to the Sinaloan people, not because he was a murderer, but because of the psychotic things he did with the bodies of his murdered victims. He decapitated them to extents beyond recognition. It was so evil that the people of Sinaloa had a popular saying that goes, whoever gets murdered by Chino Anthrax will suffer in the afterlife because of what he's done to their body on earth. On the other hand, El Mayo loved Arechiga's boldness to take out their opposition, so he made Arechiga the personal bodyguard of his son, Vicente Zambada Niebla, aka El Vincentillo. But later in 2008, when a war broke out with the Sinaloa cartel, 
El Mayo made Arechiga the head of his personal group of armed mercenaries known as Los Antrax. Every member of Los Antrax was given a diamond ring shaped into a skull head with the word Antrax written above it. The war within the cartel increased and it was a party of guns, dead bodies and casualties every time both factions met. Soon, Mexican law enforcement joined the party, seeking to put an end to the war no matter the cost. Between 2008 and 2012, the war escalated beyond control and the entire region of Sinaloa was on fire, with many residents dying on a daily. As more and more members of Los Antrax died, El Mayo was forced to withdraw Arechiga from the forefront of the war in 2013. He didn't want to lose Arechiga, who was known as Chino Antrax, to a silly war. After all, he was the best soldier in the Los Antrax army. But Chino Antrax seemed to either have a death wish or was just straight up out of his mind. Since he was no longer occupied with fighting El Mayo's war, Chino Antrax decided to become a freaking social media influencer. If that sounds very silly, well, it's because it actually is. El Chino Antrax, the number one hitman of a drug cartel, posting on the gram for likes? In 2013, he started posting on his Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts, posing with flashy cars and taking photos of himself in different cities around the world. The craziest part of his social media shenanigans was when he took a photo with A-list Hollywood celebrity Paris Hilton. Arechiga had no idea he was making the biggest mistake of his life by trying to be insta-famous, a mistake that eventually led to his death. He blurred his face on all the photos he posted, but the one thing that linked him back to Los Antrax was the Antrax diamond ring he wore in all the photos. Somehow, Chino Antrax, who was very smart with the affairs of the Sinaloa cartel, became dumb enough not to cover up the ring. It didn't take a lot of time before the US government connected all the dots and discovered he was a member of the Sinaloa cartel. Also around this time, Chino Antrax was wanted by the US government for charges of marijuana and cocaine importation. The DEA launched an operation, Operation Narco Polo, intercepting numerous phone calls between Chino Antrax and cocaine distributors in the San Diego, Tijuana area. After numerous attempts to decrypt the blur on his photos, the US government finally had a clear picture of what he looked like. With that picture and a tap into his cell phone through cell phone towers, the US government successfully found a way to catch El Chino Antrax. On December 30th, 2013, El Chino Antrax arrived in Netherlands from Mexico, still wearing his diamond Antrax ring. The US government had already contacted the Netherlands Ministry of Security and Justice with intel of his arrival to their country. But the intel on his physical looks didn't quite match Chino Antrax's real physical looks. This is because Arechiga had undergone plastic surgery to slightly utter his facial features, coupled with the fact that he was traveling with the international passport of a dead man. But once Dutch security spotted the Antrax ring on his finger, he was arrested and extradited to the United States under the Kingpin Act in January 2014. By this time, members of the Los Antrax and the Zambada family had received news of El Chino's arrest, but something very unusual happened. After almost a year of court hearings, Arechiga finally pleaded guilty on March 20, 2015, and was sentenced to seven years and three months in a U.S. federal prison. Now, if you really think about it, how did he get only seven years? The prosecution had a lot of evidence on him including detailed reports of his involvement in over 50 shipments of cocaine into the United States. Something was fishy, and the Sinaloa cartel thought the same. It became obvious that Arechiga had struck a deal with the feds to be a rat. After serving only five years, he was released and placed under house arrest on March 3, 2020. But let me tell you, he should have probably taken that life sentence. Because once the Sinaloa cartel heard about his release, they went after him before he came after them with the feds. On March 9, 2020, Arechiga ran away to a safe house with the help of his sister and her husband. But death, in the form of a Sinaloa cartel hit squad, traced him to his hideout, killing Arechiga, his sister, and her husband in a fierce firefight. The next day, the police found their dead bodies in the trunk of a black SUV parked in an isolated location. On May 6, 2014, while Chino Antrax was still serving his time, his wife was kidnapped, molested, and brutally hit on the head. 
breaking her skull open in the process and ultimately causing her death. During her funeral, members of Los Antrax paid their condolences by leaving a floral ornament in honor of her. But if the Sinaloa cartel ordered the killing of Arechiga, his wife, his sister, and her husband, why did Los Antrax pay homage to his wife? Really doesn't add up. But I'd love to hear your opinion on this in the comment section down below. So maybe it wasn't the Sinaloa cartel that ordered his murder. Maybe he didn't even make a deal with the feds. And maybe, just maybe, you like this video and subscribe to our channel and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our awesome videos. But one thing still stands, and that's the fact that El Chino Anthrax was the deadliest hitman for the Sinaloa cartel. Until our next video, see you later.